Hello and welcome to Se- We start off this week's news with Hayabusa 2, the Japanese asteroid landing spacecraft that we talked about a few weeks ago, has landed on Ryugu asteroid on the 21st of September and pictures have been released of its surface. The craft will hopefully bring a sample of the asteroid to be studied here on Earth, an exciting prospect for us all. The small 1 kilo rovers jump around on the asteroid by utilising its low gravity, but there were many worries about the extremely rough and rocky surface of Ryugu. Moving on to less exciting and more upsetting news, chemical pollution in the environment are putting orca in a less than optimal position. These compounds are called PCBs, an organic chemical that was mass produced around the planet, but many countries banned them in the 70s and 80s. When the orca catch and eat prey such as large fish and seals, they take in PCBs that have accumulated up the food chain, and these chemicals cause issues with their reproductive success. One group of killer whales living on the west coast seas of Scotland have not produced a calf in 20 years and are now down to only 8 individuals. Populations that feed on smaller fish seem to be doing alright, however orca in waters near Brazil, the UK and the Strait of Gibraltar are declining severely and could be lost in the next 30 to 40 years. The key to life itself may have been discovered to come from space in our next bit of news. Phosphates are a key element in the building blocks of life, helping life to replicate itself, and until now, how it came about was unknown. But now new evidence strongly suggests that it was formed in outer space, and then came here via comets or meteorites. Apart from this being just generally exciting, it extends the likelihood of alien life, because one of the key elements in the building blocks of life comes from space and was not formed on Earth, then it's one less thing that has to be done to create life. It could already be floating around, just waiting. It seems that sauropodomorph dinosaurs are having a good time these last few months, as another new species has just been named and described, from the early Jurassic of South Africa. Remarkably, this animal was likely the largest land creature alive at the time it existed, reaching weights of 12 metric tons. The most interesting thing about this discovery though, is that it represents a separate origin for large body size in non-sauropod sauropodomorph, and shows that such large sizes were possible for early sauropodomorphs. Ledu Mahadi Mafube, or something along those lines, was also a quadruped but with flexed front limbs instead of the columnar structures seen in giant sauropods, showing how the early members of this dinosaur lineage were experimenting with different styles of locomotion. A pretty cool bit of prehistoric behavioural evidence was published on this week, with the description of a pterodon wing bone recovered from rocks in Alabama that represent a marine environment. The bone preserved bite marks that match the teeth and jaws of an ancient shark called Squalicorax, as well as a big predatory fish named Sauridon, demonstrating that pterosaurs once made good snacks for Cretaceous fish when they fell into the water and died or were washed out from the land. Thank you very much for listening to this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it and as always feel free to subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you on Sunday.